Excellent. Welcome to our webinar. Please excuse me for starting slightly late. I basically out and about as it turned out. Some things came up and but I'm very excited to do this webinar today. It's been nicely prepared and I've got a lot of stuff ready to go and in all honesty my only issue really is I've so much that I want to share it's keeping it summarized. So let's get straight on with it. Just make sure that you've got all of your um, you know Everything basically distractions turned off. We're going to be going till two o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so about an hour and twenty minutes from now. Um, latest it'll be finished is about ten past, quarter past. It'll be absolute latest, but I'll be going to somewhere around about um, eleven o'clock Perth time, two o'clock Eastern Standard Time, New York. It's one in the morning. Should be finished by then, and then take questions. So it'll be finished by latest quarter past, maybe even earlier. Okay. So what are you going to learn today? It's really, I'm going to touch on some, some of these things I will cover more than others, but basically you're going to be listening to how our economic system works, how it's built around fiction money, and really why it's destined for a horrible, horrible fall. And look, the truth is, the one thing that I will be upfront with you is that many have gone ahead and done I mean extremists and alarmists, and the biggest mistake people make is timing, because in all honesty, we really don't know. For all I know, this could happen next month. This could happen in three months, could happen in a year. It might even go for another few years because the truth is fraud keeps getting built about fraud. You can cover things up. You can be as sick as a dog in your, in your health and yet walk around basically looking like you're healthy because you learn to live a really good illusion, but eventually your chickens come home to roost. And basically things that I'm seeing, let, let's just say Robert Kiyosaki, and many, many um, economists are now saying they'd be surprised if the system lasts another 12 months. And in all honesty, I feel that myself. But in saying that, you just don't know. So I want to say that up front. You know, I don't want to get up and say, it's definitely going to happen in the next few months or next 12 months, because the truth is we really don't know. The only thing I can tell you is that, believe you me, even if there's 50% chance that I'm right, and I believe that's a pretty good call, 50% chance, if you get caught out in a financial collapse where everything collapses around you and you have nothing, believe you me, you'll be in horrible regret and wishing to help you listen. And I think we all would agree on that one. So it's very, 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 very important to know this stuff. And believe you me when I say, that this is the most important information you're going to hear this year. And I'm not going to say that lightly because the truth is I have no question and no doubt in my heart that we're heading for a mother of a collapse. The only thing that I can't say for sure is when it's going to happen. And what I can show you is that humans and human beings do not learn from history. And we know that we don't. I mean, we repeat our lessons over and over and over and over and over again. We've just seen in our Australian government after years of border protection and having one of the best probably countries in the Western world for having migration problems, proceed to pass laws because of an absolute imbecile called Bill Shorten, who then decided, and, and in my view, a straight out Satanist or in some way working for dark forces. And I'd say, I don't have no problem saying that to, to basically bring in laws to deliberately undermine that and try to attack religious freedoms. So humans don't learn from history. We just don't, you know, that we, we don't learn from our history. And, the fact is we've had depressions, we've had financial collapses, and it's always the same reason every time, and we don't learn from it. So the time is that the fact that you're on this webinar tells me that you are people who are very genuinely interested in learning, and that's what I'm assuming. And today I do need to be upfront with you. I don't want to mislead anyone. This is going to be a very straight shooting webinar. I'm going to be very upfront. I'm going to be teaching really good financial information, and I'm also going to be bringing some spiritual information which some might be seen as, as, as religion. I don't, I don't know how people perceive it and, and right now I don't really care. And the things that I've, that I've experienced in recent times and many of you know me and one, th one thing that people who know me know about me is that there are many things in my life which I'll openly tell you which I've been a bit foolish about and equally when I tell you that I've had extraterrestrials turning up at my house telling me what's going to come, I'm not lying to you. This has been happening to me gave me the fright of my life when it first happened to me and I, I argued for months and I tried to pretend it wasn't happening and in the end I just accepted it. So right now we do have some big things coming up ahead of us and in all honesty all I'm really interested in is helping the people who are here to listen. That's it. You know, at the end of the day if you end up with just 
if we end up with 300 people across the whole of Australia who could hear this message, did took action and started doing something, we could make a big difference in this country. We really can. And we can start to see many lives and people, you know, saved from a very, very severe crash and see people helped. And ultimately, that's what we're here to do, help humanity and help people and build, bring something that's going to make a real difference. So we're covering that, the history of the Great Depression, economic troubles, ancient prophecies predicting major economic calamities in the transition from the Pisces age to the Aquarius age, which we're in now. Um, some of the um, best kept secrets of the rich and famous, I'll be frank so I don't mislead you on these next two. I'm not going to cover them much, I'll briefly cover them. But at the end of this webinar, for those who really are keen and love what we're about, we're going to be offering you to come to a, we're going to be offering you something further um, to come along and learn a little bit more. And there will be a follow up kind of webinar on this stuff. But yeah, like I said, for those who hear, either hear this first webinar, like what I say, the next webinar, we will teach a little bit more on this stuff. So, and then finally, the coming economic crash and how to prepare for it. So we'll be making a webinar. At the end of this webinar, we'll be making an offer about a group. Now, keep in mind, we're not going to be taking membership of that group straight away. The offer will be for those who show a genuine expression of interest. We'll be having a further webinar just to go through and teach you a bit more about this stuff, because my aim is to give as much free information to really help you. And also make sure that anyone who joins this group is really aware of what they'll be learning, what will be happening, and the kind of wealth that we plan to build and see happen. So at the end of it, even if you don't get this offer, I'm confident you'll get tremendous value from this webinar today. So like I said, I'm really here today to serve, to share, share what I've been told and share what I've been given. This is a mixture of my own years of research. I've been involved in an underground movement, as many of you know. Met some of the most remarkable people in the world living off the grid. I spent two years without working, living in, un in an underground movement in 2001 to 2003. I've worked for tax office for 10 years. I've been involved in business. And I, I, I used to run a law firm and be a lawyer before I walked away from that. I, I'm a trained high-level um, international tax accountant, and I am also run a high-level spiritual awakening movement. And I'm also a cryptocurrency investor, and I've invested in cryptos, e-gold, e-currencies, and normal gold, normal silver, property, everything. And now, of course, having extraterrestrials turn up, which means either you think I'm completely crazy or you're extremely curious, one of the two. And in all honesty, whichever one it is, is, is fine. But at least it's going to make it interesting for you. So as you can hear, this is not something, this is something I am qualified to speak on. It's something I do know what I'm talking about, something I have been very much involved in, both from a spiritual perspective and an economic financial perspective. So today we're really here to give you some stuff and move this along. Okay, so who's intrigued so far anyway? Who's who's with me so far? Who's like, yep, they're curious and excited to see where this goes to? <laughs> yep, plenty of people. Yeah, Christine Norby thinks I'm, I'm crazy. So good, I'm glad you do, Christine. So I'm sure Steve Plummer does too, but he's enjoying himself being on here. Okay. So here's some of the things going on. Global debt. I mean, the, the world global debt is something that's pretty well known. So all this stuff, I'm telling you what we already know. Um, they'll never pay this back. Either the debt is forgiven or the financial system collapses or the country remains slave to international bankers. As you'll see in this webinar, I'll be introducing you to a little bit of the knowledge I learned in the underground movement and how America since 1938 has been has been secretly a slave and bankrupt under the international bankers since 1938. And you'll learn about the fact that there was a time in history when all this was undone. In other words, where bankers were defeated and a whole new system came in in the Renaissance. And you'll be learning stuff that was actually erased from the history books. And if you don't believe me that stuff is erased from history books, you really shouldn't be on this webinar. But in saying that, I, I have seen with my own eyes history books which were done before 19. 1914 and history books after when the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers took over the history books. So the fact is the history books have been erased, they've been changed, they've been tampered with. My father, who's one of the, by the way, my father, David Black, who's one of Australia's most famous and top well-known historians, admitted to me probably about a month ago. He said, although he can never say for sure, he said he's realised that all of history that we read is really what people have written in books. And he said, he don't know, he said, even he doesn't know anymore if it's true or not. 
And that was from a major historian, my father, David Black, who to this day, politicians still meet with him. I met the Premier of WA with him just recently, who knows him as a, knows him and, and he's highly regarded. So he's now admitting that it's quite possible and quite likely that history has actually been altered. So you see this with global debt. You see this with property prices. If you want to have a look at right now, I'll show you even right now as we speak. OECD warns Australia to prepare contingency um, plans for a severe collapse in the housing market, and this was only yesterday. Okay? And there's numerous other articles by major economists. It's already dropping like crazy as many of you would be very nicely aware about, but they're admitting that it's pretty much fucked. And, and to cap it off, what's their solution? Increase the interest rates. <laughs> and as we know, that will actually make it worse, but that's the solution. You can rest assured if Bill Shorten gets into power, that will certainly happen because he's already said he wants to clamp down negative gearing. So this is what you're dealing with. Cryptocurrencies, as you know, are crashing at the rate of knots. Ethereum, one sixteen hundred, less than 100. Bitcoin Cash was 886 weeks ago. It's 107 last I looked. Bitcoin is below 4,000. Yes, it'll probably go up again, but who knows? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. The truth is none of us really know if they will or not. And I've, I'm having clients very frightened contacting me about this whole thing who put money in cryptos based on their, on their hope. The point is, there's a lot of shit going on. Stock market is volatile as heck. The pound, as you know, is crashing like crazy right now because of this whole Brexit thing. France right now is in revolution. I don't know, I'm sure you've been following this, but France right now is in revolution. You've had guys running around in yellow vests and women, men and women. You've got them in Netherlands and Sweden have now joined up with them and others. And they're protesting, not like they say against the fuel tax, they're protesting against outrageous taxes, this complete, you know, fraud of climate change, which I think is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life, because it's obvious as heck climate is changing, but it's like this big deal about it. And then saying it's, gonna, it's getting warmer when people living in West Australia know it's been getting colder over here. And then you've got people talking about an ice age coming. So the point is, everyone knows the climate is changing, but again, there's all these distractions to take away from the fact that people right now are in a system that's failing fast. The money's all going into the hands of rich bankers and, other, and, and others and corporate greed and moving us fast towards a new world order with very limited freedom. You've got companies like Tesla who've never made a profit and I, and, and, you know, I, would, I can't see that ever will run by Elon Musk worth billions and making a fortune and him saying crazy things. You know, you've got stock markets are going on like this right now. And yes, you've got good investments, don't get me wrong. I'm not, but, let, but let's face it, this is what you're dealing with. And, the, and worst of all, the banking system. As we speak, we have a banking system, which don't believe me, have a look at the Money Masters on YouTube and let me find it for you. If you haven't watched this, this is a must homework for you. If you have not watched this video, you must. This one here, yep, here it is, the rise of the bankers. So ignore the stuff that's by Flat Earth, but um, it's three hours and 29 minutes. It's a brilliant, brilliant video. Out of interest, who has watched that video? Give me a yes. Great, a lot of people have, a lot of people haven't. So, okay, so what we've got here is Zeitgeist is very similar. Adrian Stern says, yep, Zeitgeist. Yep, that's a good one, Adrian. Thank you for bringing that one up. It's another one. It's called Zeitgeist. So I'm just going to show that one. That's also very good. So Zeitgeist. So it's a movie. Um, yeah, here we are. See, 2007, political movie. 
So it's a real that that's another one which is a, a bit of a truth kind of one. So basically we have a fractional reserve banking system, which in simple term means they pull money out of their ask, they print it up, they make it up, and they don't actually give you anything. It's not backed by gold, by silver, or anything tangible. The whole thing is made up. So it's not hard to work out that a system like that that's based on fraud is unlikely to have any real lasting possibility and actually go anywhere. Ultimately, you want to be sovereign and the captain of your own financial ship laden with gold. And true sovereignty, by the way, means that you have complete personal power and you're not reliant on anyone outside of you to basically guide you. That's what true sovereignty is. A sovereign man or woman is someone who's uh, independent and not reliant upon someone outside of himself to have power over them. That is ultimately who we are and who we're meant to be. It's actually funny because I had a... um. I had a friend come and see me yesterday, and a guy I regard very highly, a, a pastor from down in Boya Brook, a guy called John. And basically, I I told him very clearly, um, I said, you're probably the only church person I even speak to about this stuff because I don't really have a lot of time for them, I mean, in terms of right now and what's going on. And I said that basically right now, there's a spiritual awakening and economic awakening happening, and it's really happening among people now who are not part of this kind of you know, system or whatever else. And so anyway, you want to be sovereign and the captain of your own financial ship. So like I mentioned, I've worked for the ATO. I've had all this other stuff. I won't go into that one. That's me and my, you know, of my views of the beach where I live. I live on this lovely area. I actually deliberately bought a, um, got a, I've deliberately got a place for myself down in um, Coogee, which is near Fremantle. In West Australia, it's kind of like a former holiday area, so I feel like I'm permanently on holiday, which is great. Very relaxed kind of place for those of you who've been there and know. I run this awakening work as well, the spiritual awakening work, which is designed to really bring reform and awaken cities spiritually, economically, government, and things like that. I'm, I'm actually meeting some people this week about a youth revolution movement we're looking at starting. I've spoken on cruise ships. I've shared the stage with these guys here. These are my kids. Unfortunately, I forgot to put my one, my more recent one, so they're probably horrified if they're watching it, but here they are from two years ago in America. And these are some of the places I've been to, like Sedona in Arizona and many other places in America. So anyway, that's the two sides of me, really, the, the investment economist guy and the yogi or spiritual guy on the side. And, that, and to me, both those solutions are critical if you're going to be come get get through this coming crash that's coming you're gonna to have to have both both sides sorted because in all honesty this is one of the things that i i learned in the underground movement and in my involvement in some very high level churches and spiritual works a lot of stuff which up until the last three months i've not shared with the planet and hardly shared it at all and it's like even lately my you know my, my woman sammy lucas and you know my partner my um my kids and others around me they've been asking me gosh how where do you know all this stuff and i said i've actually known it for years but I wasn't released until now to share to share this underground knowledge on, until now. But one thing I can tell you now is that people don't get control of a planet who are stupid and who don't know how to work in the spiritual realm. Because the truth is, ultimately, many of us have had movies called The Secret come out now, which shows how it's the power of our thinking, our, our sense, our spirituality that we manifest in. So that tells you in itself that the people who are controlling the planet know how to manifest in a dark magic way or in some kind of black sorcery or witchcraft, dark witchcraft way to actually manipulate consciousness to go into a direction that you don't want it to go. If that wasn't true, we'd have a very nice planet right now where the animals are treated well, rainforests are looked after, and things would be going well. Whereas right now, we live in a planet basically where people spend most of their time destroying places for profits. They're talking about destroying our beautiful Ningaloo reef right now for some mining guys. They've been ruining the different e eco structure. They've been killing off people who have different views to them, doing wars. You've had numerous swindling and economic swindling on the internet and everywhere happening. You've got pharmaceuticals who set up basically drugs and that, which are designed to make you sick. I mean, the things that make you well, like cannabis and weed and hemp and other things are made illegal. 
you know, you, anyone who tells me, oh, we live on a beautiful planet, I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's, yes, we do have a potentially very beautiful planet with so many beautiful things, but right now, whoever's manipulating the consciousness is doing it in a way that's anything but helping the best interests of the planet and of humanity. So really, that's what I'm here to do, to see this consciousness shift and to teach and, and to really bring in my, my, my knowledge and wisdom in the area when it comes to finances, when it comes to taxes, to the law, having been involved in that, and spirituality, and I can assure you, but if you ask me what is the one thing above all else is the most important, I would say it's a spirituality. Because the truth is, I've lived, I lived in, when I was in the underground movement, I literally had no work, no job, no business, and I started with pretty much nothing. And I lived, and I lived abundantly through that time because I was guided by higher forces, what to invest in, what to go into, and money just came to me. So the truth is, when you learn to live in that kind of realm, you really just, then, then you learn, it doesn't matter what happens on the planet, you're going to be fine. And ultimately, that is the first place you want to come from. And then the practical side then comes a lot more easier. So you basically got a fraudulent money system where governments create money out of nothing. And by borrowing, basically, a central bank, which is 100% privately owned. And so to pay interest pay governments raise taxes to meet demands of the creditors. And you see this right now in France. You see this in Greece. You see this in so many places where to meet the demands of the creditors, um, the banks, uh, basically the governments raise taxes and cut pensions on the people. It's, it's disgraceful. It's just a big cartel rot. And, you'll, and if you watch the Money Masters video, and that's what I'm really telling you to watch because this is all this stuff I'm showing you here, the 1913 Federal Reserve, it came from a place called Jekyll Island where politicians did this big swindle to get in there, rush some legislation before Christmas when everyone had gone home and bring in a federal reserve, which mind you is what they're trying to do right now in Australia with this Religious Freedom Act. It's crazy. In 1913, and here's one of the little swindles which very few people know about. What was also agreed was to bring in a federal reserve system. They needed a tax system to make sure they got interest payments paid on the debt. Like, what do bankers do when bankers want to give you a mortgage on your house? Well, number one, they write you a loan that doesn't exist, first and foremost. And then after they've done that and written you a mortgage that doesn't actually exist, they give security over your house, which does exist. And so even that alone tells you straight away how they've managed to get your wealth transferred over to them, effectively. The point is here that once, once that now that private um, corporations, the Federal Reserve, loan money to the government, they want security for their loans. And what's their security? All the real estate of the country, the assets. Why do you think that Australia right now is no longer a common wealth country? It's a corporation. And yes, you heard me correctly. If you go to the SEC in Washington and look at their website, the Securities Exchange Commission, you'll see the Commonwealth of Australia is registered as a corporation with them. And so when you get citizenship of Australia, you all you are is you're now a member of the corporation and you've signed over and given your power over to this corporation owned by Washington. And then indirectly, the SEC is again owned by international bankers. I know somebody who went through and they found that 86% of corporate ownership in Australia, this was back in the 2000s, was traced back to shadow corporations that couldn't find the owners and the few evidence they could find they belong to international bankers and people in Europe. I met a lady in 2004 who showed me with my, her, and I saw with my own eyes, documents proving that a, a few small groups in the Catholic Church and a few others own pretty much most of the prime real estate in West Australia. I saw the documents. So this is what you're dealing with, a major bloomin' swindle and takeover going on. And this is basically, at the end of the day, why do you, and if you think logically, why do they want to do this? Because they want to bring in their own financial system and tax system, which everyone is forced to be on. And the truth is, if your survival of your family and your beloved children and your partner giving you shit because they're so frightened depends upon it, most people just basically blot it out, they numb themselves to the pain, and they sign up and they give away more rights and more freedoms. And bingo. In 1970s, if anyone had told us that there'd be surveillance cameras all over the state, including on your television and on your computer, 
So if people could know what you're doing all the time, we would have been like, there's no way. I remember in the 80s when they were talking about this, people were laughing about it. I went to hear a guy called Barry Smith. And I remember at the time telling people this is what's going to happen, but no one, no one was listening and saying, oh, it's all extremism. Now no one's saying that anymore. Now everyone knows it's reality. Now, but now the world is waking up and getting a little bit scared. And the truth is, this could have been dealt with a long time ago. But by and large, we choose to numb ourselves and not face the truth as to what's going on. And the truth is, these fuckers are looking to do this. That's the truth. And you can see it happening. And I'll be showing you more evidence later on that's coming out everywhere about this. So we need to start to take steps to become spiritually sovereign and then economically sovereign. Greece was a classic example. They, in, the, in 2015 and 16, Greece stood their ground and refused to basically agree to the EU who were trying to force them to basically stay in their system and give, cut their pensions and increase their taxes. They even had a referendum. The people said no, but the EU said, if you don't do it, we'll take all your assets off you and with their tail between their legs, they gave it up. Right now, there's a very real risk that the EU are going to successfully bully Britain into basically giving up their Brexit rights. Because Britain are trying to leave and the EU keep on doing stuff to try and force them to stay, even though the EU have forced migration upon Britain and taken a beautiful country into a place that's pretty much overrun by Islamic people. You've got Turks going into Europe under a leader called Erdogan, who have no real regard for women's rights, for people's rights, for Islamic rights, um, or for people's rights on the whole. And you can read all about that. And that's one of the biggest reasons they're protesting in France and, and everywhere else. And then you've got, of course, in Melbourne now, you've got African crime game problem increasing and we're trying to pretend it's not happening. So this is the reality of what we're facing in the world right now. And so Christine always says getting a bit late now. In all honesty, to some degree it is, Christine. There's karma that's coming upon the planet and in situations that happen are not, but are now no longer avoidable. However, there's still things that are avoidable and that's the ability for all of us to do something and take action steps to start to become sovereign and have real sovereignty of heart, of soul, of, of spiritual being and our economic being. So that's absolutely, we can take control and authority over our own life and what's going to happen. And like I said, in all honesty, um, I can remember in May, and I'll share this openly, I've shared this in many of my webinars, but I'm beyond the point of caring what people think of me when I share this, but you know, back in, um, back in April, I remember lying in bed one night and I was really calm. I wasn't morbid, I wasn't depressed. But I remember thinking about my life over a number of days, I was just thinking about my life and I was just pondering about what I'd done and what I'd achieved and where I'd been at. And I remember just thinking, you know, what have I really done? I thought, yeah, I've helped people out of tax. Yeah, you know, I've done some good things. I know I'm happy with my kids and I've raised good kids. Apart from my spiritual mission, and I thought, nah, I failed. I didn't achieve it. End of the day, me just being some shitty accountant and lawyer who's helped some people with taxes, yeah, I've done some good things. I know I've done enough where at least I don't feel like I've been an absolute disaster. But at the same time, I thought I failed my mission. And I remember one night connecting with Christ, connecting with the masters, connecting with high realms, with God, with the source. Who And I just, all I said was, I'm ready to come home. I said, I failed in my mission. I said, I know it. I said, I can't tell anyone around me because they'll all say to me how ridiculous I'm being and, and how much of a impact I am on people's lives. And the truth is I said, I've done jack shit. You know, the planet's got worse and worse throughout the years of my life. I know when I was young, I was called to make a change. And I know what happened when I was 18 and I had that encounter with God when I was 18. I had this, I was a total skeptic to the point where when I was in this meeting, they even said to me, God, you're one of the most skeptical people. And I had the power of God hit me so strongly. I hit the ground. I was in a trance and could hardly move. And I got out. And from that day on, I couldn't deny it, which is why my whole life since then has really been a spiritual quest. And I've had many similar encounters since. And then in April, then in May, on the night of my birthday, I got the fright of my life when literally nine angels turned up and turned up. And one of them went ape shit at me. <laughs> I literally went ape shit at me and started carrying on at me about the fact that I did it. But yes, you know, I did have a big mission and I'd done, and I've basically done fuck all. 
and I was sitting there whinging about it and I basically argued for ages before I finally stopped arguing and I was told to stop being a stupid lawyer and actually listen to him which funny enough for those of you who know me know it's the only way to speak to me I am very strong-minded and strong-headed and I'm really not afraid of anyone come back from my experience of being a lawyer and you know like those of you who know me know anyone who's going to go on the internet and call the tax office a bunch of greedy gold scumbags and he's been audited a few times and and just calmly said to him you know I've got no fear of you but, and but I'm going to cooperate with you and each time it's gone through smoothly so there hasn't been a fear of mine at the end of the day I have in fact if anything I've enjoyed it you know enjoyed taking this on and helping people with taxes so they said so they just they just said to me we want you to make a difference you know we want you the fact is the system is going to crash the economy is going to crash it's going to go down the planet is experiencing karma and they even started telling me about natural disasters that were coming upon the planet and i've been seeing these things happen like the storms in queensland and new south wales there's another storm coming i was told about all this stuff i've been telling my kids that these were going to happen and at first i think everyone thought i was being extreme and then now one by one everything i've been telling them they've been seeing happen and now my whole family's believing now because I see these things, I tell them what's going to happen, and then it happens. And it's happened, and without, I don't want to exaggerate here, I want to be truthful. I would say I've been 80% accurate even on the timing and about 95% accurate so far on what I've been saying. And so whatever for whatever reason, these higher beings have chosen to work with me. They've I, uh, For four months, I still resisted, I must admit. I just kept saying to them, if I come out and say all this to my clients, they'll all think I've gone mad. And then finally... <laughs> In September, I had a mighty healing experience where a whole lot of my past stuff and childhood wounds was healed in an instant. I was shown things that were to come around finances and what I'd need to do. And suddenly I burst out laughing. I thought, who cares what people will think? I'm only on this planet for a time and a season, whatever it is. We all are. Um, no one at the end of their life wishes they worked hard or whatever. Let's just make life an adventure. Let's just get out and speak the truth. Let's 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 be of such service to the planet. But I can stand with pride at the end of my life and whenever that day, whenever those times have come and know that I've made a difference. And that's where I'm at. And ever since then, everything's happened easier. Money's come easier to me. I've worked less. And I'm seeing the disasters I've seen happening. And believe you me, what we're seeing is only the beginning. The things happening like that, you're going to be seeing tidal waves hit places. You're going to be seeing... Um, like major storms, you're going to be the revolutions in Europe. You can ask my kids and my partner. I told them about four weeks ago, Europe's going to go ape shit. You watch. I said, Europe is going to go ape shit. Europe has got some terrible days ahead of it. Absolutely. And what you're seeing now is just like nothing. This is just a very tiny initial entree where you walk into the restaurant and you're given a little bit of a taste of half an olive as you walk in. That's what it's like right now. So we are going to be, we're seeing these things ahead. We're seeing financial stuff ahead. And the fact is, we need to be fucking ready. We really do. Right now, this scripture is very true. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. But that's a fact. In other words, the borrowers are, are bitches to the banks. So right now, pretty much, when we've got our money sitting in banks and cash in the banks, we're the bank's bitches. That's why cryptocurrencies took off, because people saw it as a legitimate way and they did. I was excited until I saw everyone still seeing cryptos having to be changed into cash. And I, I said back in December, and some of you may have heard my webinar last year, when I said cryptos have no power while people still rely on the cash system. And believe you me, when I say cash society is coming, they're going to crash it. And their plan is to keep people reliant on crash, cash and then crash the fuck out of it. And the truth is they're getting control of the crypto world bit by bit now. And that's why cryptos are crashing. Because the people who are in it in the beginning, because they believed in it, are now seeing the truth in that more and more it's becoming regulated. That's the fact. And deep down, you all know it. My people perish through lack of knowledge. In other words, because it basically people perish and go into financial ruin because we're basically fuckwits. In other words, we don't want to learn. We want to stay ignorant. We want to stay in the background and not and basically just kind of trust in the system. By the way, I know I'm being pretty extreme. Who's resonating or enjoying what I'm saying? You know, who's who's actually getting into this right now? Yep. <laughs> yeah, Ben Chisler, yep. No, good. Seems people are enjoying it, which is good. Because I love how the Bible says, you know, that he takes the foolish things of the world and can, to confound the wise. In other words, 
Christ, you know, the, the makers of this planet, they love taking the people everyone else sees as an idiot and making these people great. That's why it says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And so I love that kind of stuff. I, I like the fact that a lot of my family and people see me as just some some idiot. I really do. Because it's why in the end, why so many times I've won impossible victories in legal matters and other matters because people never took me seriously. So it's been good. Governor Beersley Rumi, this is why you got income taxes. Because, and he, and he even admits, governments can print all the money it needs. So why does it need taxes for expenses? Of course it doesn't need tax for expenses. So when people say, oh, you must pay your fair share to cover your expenses, absolute bullshit. For one, the corporations pay less than 1%, as you know. You, Hong Kong has like virtually no taxes at all and Panama and other places in their prosperous countries. So you know it's bullshit. You know that they're lying through their teeth and they just want to steal your money. So an income tax is maintained to siphon excess paper out of circulation. This is what Larry Bates said. So in periods of economic upheaval, wealth is not destroyed, it is merely transferred. The question is, is are you going to be transferring it over to the banks? Or are you going to be part of the ones where it's going to be transferred to you? And keep in mind, let's be realistic here. Doing a mere financial strategy, you have no hope against these people. These people are far smarter than any of us. They control the system. It requires a spiritual solution as much as a physical solution. Who's with me on that one? You've got to have a manifestation spiritual power as much as you're going to have a financial one. Otherwise, you can forget it. Beautiful. I sent you an email about the fall of the Roman Empire, which is, by the way, happening all over the Western world and in Europe. It's happening all over again. It really is. It's why taxes continue to increase in Western countries while social services drop. So this is what you're dealing with. And sorry, I've got this here. I, I missed it here. But 2008, there was four workers to every one pensioner. At current rates, I reckon it'll be down to three or three and a half workers by 2028. So they have to keep increasing your taxes. That's the cost, by the way, of not tax planning. So when you let the government swindle you and steal your money and fuck all over you and take your money without question, this is what happens. Your ability to accumulate wealth and combat inflation becomes non-existent. Even worse over 20 years. How many of you know that, that 20 years ago, if you had been able to know this knowledge back then, you'd be in a lot better place than you are now? Who knows that ignorance has fucked you up in the last 20 years? <laughs> Jeff Page, is that a real question? Correct. So more and more commentators have been speaking about it. Now, again, the mistake these guys make is they all make up a year and say it's definitely. Even Robert Kiyosaki said 2016 in his book Second Chance. I, I must admit, I, I was probably the one person who said that I know of. I kept saying I don't think it's going to happen just yet. And I, I said that all along. I said it will happen when people don't expect it. That's, that's, that's generally how these things work. Just when you think it's definitely not going to happen, that's when it actually is going to happen. So that's why I still don't believe myself it's going to happen, say, in the next month. I might be completely wrong. I do believe, though, we don't have much time. We really don't have much time. And I think you're talking about a matter of months rather than years myself. Like I said, I'll emphasize there's every likelihood I'm going to be, I'm going to be wrong on the timing. But I, I can tell you on, on what I'm telling you about this is that I'm absolutely correct, and I will back my life on this. Porter Stain, and you read Porter Stainsbury, Harry Dent, anyone who's got half a brain. Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki, ironically, wrote a book. I don't know if anyone here read that book, Why I Want You to Be Rich. And Trump said back then the, the, world, the economy was going to crash horribly. And he even said, I would love to become president of America and do something about this. 
And pretty much what he wrote in that book is what he's doing now. It's quite interesting. And back then, even Hillary Clinton and all that were thinking it was a good book. So you can tell that the biggest issue is not the truth of what Trump is doing. It's the fact he's going against the deep state and holding up the economic collapse that it's trying to bring in so it can control the world. So when a system is built on fraud and global debt, it cannot stand. It'll only crash and fall apart. I've seen so many articles about a coming crash in the last two weeks in the news that I've almost lost like touch of it. I just haven't, I've literally lost touch with them all, how many there are. And I was going to find them all and I thought, in the end, I thought, you know what? At the end of the day, the people who are really serious about this can go do some research after this webinar and they'll quickly find out for themselves the truth of what I'm saying. Because right now, I'm really searching for people to work with and who are absolutely serious about this and who are people who, in a sense, have got a bit of a brain and who are willing to use that brain to actually do this stuff. So, in the Bible, it actually says, a false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his life. And you see that on the Money Masters video. They quote from that. And it's actually talking about a practice that was used in ancient times where when they used to weigh on the scales to work out your correct weight, they'd use a false weight or false balance would be hidden there to tamper with the weight so they could overcharge people. And in other words, when you overcharge and swindle people, it is an abomination. And I know with myself, this was one of the things which I got my ass absolutely kicked um, about two months ago, three months ago. Some of you came to my house for a webinar where I put a, or, or sorry, not a webinar, a live event. And I planned to do something completely different. And everyone, and everyone who's here remembers what happened. Angels pretty much turned up out of the blue and started kicking everyone's ass about swindling and about poor business practices and making things right from past lives, past life cleansing, everything. And it was a bit of a remarkable experience. And for many people who had that, that group, it changed their life, as you know. So this is a just weight and balances. In other words, fairness in business. And the truth is fairness can also mean that, and I say this now to people, when people join my classes, if I get am amazing results, like let's say, for example, if I, let's say that I save someone $2 million tax, you know, should they just pay me $10,000? Absolutely not. This is something they've been speaking to me. They're saying, you know, if you save someone $2 million from fantastic, you know, work and spiritual work and financial work, they should be giving you uh, like $100,000 or something like that. And some of the more conscious clients have been volunteering this kind of thing to me. I have a client right now who I've saved him a fortune in tax legally. Absolutely, you know, which no one else could solve. And he's insisted on paying me not only a large fee, but six grand a month, basically, for 12 months, uh, even after his contract finished, even though he hardly needs my services, just as a thank you. Um, by contrast, there are other people who I was told very clearly, you know, these people you haven't delivered what you promised them. We want you to go and make it right. And I was spending quite a bit of time going to clients who I felt hadn't got a full return from me and actually offering them, you know, different things, free classes, partial refunds, things like that. So it's been an amazing time for me. And actually I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it because you literally go to bed and you sleep really well when you know that you're on track with your life and you're doing right by people around you. It's a great feeling. And there's another one here. And mind you, when England had the Renaissance under King Edward, who brought in the Renaissance, he he was famous in England. And in fact, the full extent of what that man, of what that king did in the 1300s, because he was the one who brought in the second Magna Carta, who refined it, where he gave rights, all, where basically he brought in rights for everyone and against um, oppressive taxes and rights for the people. And one of the things he did was he banned interest. So he made it illegal to charge interest because the whole reason that inflation happens is interest and basically money going to the bankers. So he changed the whole economic system. So inflation stopped happening because if you actually study the price of gold, for example, there's been no inflation. If you actually look at um, genuine wealth, you know, number values have gone up. But the actual, for example, price of gold is still the same as it was a thousand years ago when you actually weigh it up relatively. 
The only difference now is prices have gone up and, 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 and banks are creating artificial debt. So all more money goes to the corporations and the banks and less to the people. That's all that's been happening. So, by the way, who knew that or who suspected that at least? Huh. I know. Jeff says, what are you having for breakfast, mate? Yeah, look, I must admit my throat got a bit dry, Jeff, so I just drank some um, some acai bowls as I was talking then. So there you go. You found me out, mate. Um, <laughs> I enjoy being honest these days. I just tell people the truth. I've learned that, you know, much better just to be absolutely, you know, truthful with people because people know it when you're bullshitting them. So these days I just don't fuck around. So the answer is yes. So I've been caught out as I'm doing this webinar. I'm getting I've had a dry throat right now. I forgot to get some water. I'm away from anywhere where I can get water. So what I'm having to do is drink from an acai bowl, which I've got some juice in that in there. So there you go. Okay, so continuing on on my wonderful breakfast and sharing with you. So history of crashes, 1907 crash. There's been heaps of them. If you have, and like I said, I don't have time to go into this in this webinar, but for those who are going to be more of a part of our ongoing movement and work we're going to we're all doing, I'll be sharing and teaching about all the different crashes in history. Because the truth is, the people who actually do the bloom and swindles, they are very, very aware of this. And you know, I remember teaching a seminar years ago about black magic and how they use black magic and sorcery to control the planet and control people's minds and do mind control. And I was doing this little workshop, and honestly, I think that everyone there was kind of looking at me, smiling at me, like, yeah, whatever. There was one guy who stared at me intently, and his eyes never left me. After the seminar, he came up to me and goes, that was really interesting. I said, yeah, was it? And he goes, well, he goes, I was one of those guys. He goes, I was involved in the movement that did that kind of stuff. He said, I just didn't think how anyone knew about it. It was all done in top secret. And, you know, we, we, we work very much in secret. He goes, I pulled out of it recently, and I've been trying to work to get my life back on track. And I've met numerous other people since who admitted this. I remember working with a naturopath who told me straight out. He goes, oh, yep. He goes, I was telling him about it. He looked at me and goes, he goes, I can't believe you know this stuff. But he goes, yes, I know about this stuff because I've seen it being done. And I've even met people who have that much um, sorcery power and black magic. They can control weather and create um, cataclysms against, against countries. I was like, shit, really? He goes, yeah. And then I went and did some more research and found out that was true. So... When I was in the underground movement, I worked with a guy called Daniel McLaughlin, who was a hero of the movement. Everyone used to talk about him, and I managed to get two weeks with the guy. I flew him over to Perth. He stayed in my house. And me and, and Grace, you know, Black, my former wife, she still to this day, we talk about it. And we were talking about him this morning in those two weeks and how it changed our life. This guy, who pretty much won almost any court case he went into, he told the tax officer a bunch of frauds in court and they and asked them to prove their identity, and they quickly ran away and backed off and dropped the case. You know, a guy who had tremendous power and who taught me a lot of my stuff, which I learned today and why I still to this day, you know, I don't do a census. I haven't done voting, all kinds of stuff. I've And I've learned exactly how the whole swindle and movement was set up, even the way language is used to control you, how they've changed the language, how they've changed your status of yourself. Even calling you a human. That actually means sub-man. don't know if you know that, but a human means sub-man, a lower form of man, whereas the truth is those who are part of the chosen ones are actually a god. Um, I know for a fact I'm a god. You can read that in the Psalms. It says that we are a race of gods. And those who are who are indigos and who are walking in the truth for know this light, we are a race of gods, which means of higher beings that we can connect direct to source. And we're meant to be over government, not the other way around. So either now you think I'm really crazy or you're really excited, one of the two. And in all honesty, as C.S. Lewis said, you know, I don't care if you think I'm a liar or a lunatic, or he said, or he said, or some kind of saviour. He said, whichever way, at least, at least it's better than being seen as ordinary. And in fact, he said that about Christ. He said, you can't ever say that Christ was an ordinary guy. He either was a liar, a lunatic, or he was the son of God, who he said he was. So, correct, very enlightened. Um, Andrew Spock, yeah, I like what you said there. Very, very true. So what you just said in there. Glenn Wallace excited, loves, loves all this, great. So 
1929, you had the great economic crash. You've got to realise how much our life was really changed by 1929. Um, the huge boom of the 1920s, interest rates were low. It shot up really high in 1928 and 29. If you actually study the history of it, interest rates got so high, they hit like 18, 19, 20%, even 25% um, after, being, after being as low as like 1% in 1928. And that triggered a huge crash. The Money Masters videos told you how the Kennedy sold this stock just before because they heard the cab driver, but all of the wealthy were out. If you study about the World Trade Center bombing in 2001, the 4,000 guys involved in, in economic finance, Jewish finance, not one of them died. All these Jewish financiers got texts on the day, not one of them died. This can be found. There was an abnormal trading in put options three days before September 11. There was an abnormal um, trading of options. Again, you can research this online and find this out. There was an abnormal number of options trading happening in airline stocks and insurance stocks. And they couldn't trace who they were for. They were worked out they were with Islamic financing and Jewish bankers who were doing it. So in other words, there were people who knew about this. Daniel McLaughlin, who came to my house um, from the underground movement, he it was well known. The reason he became a hero and got on the map in the underground movement was in April 2001, he told everyone not to be in, in New York in September because he said something terrible was going to happen and it would be brought about um, by international finances working with Islamic terrorists. And he said it would be done to basically bring in, to bring in a whole new financial order and, the force, and to get more economic control. And this was well known, this happened. And he also explained that many, many who in Africa know to this day that, that the actual World Trade Center bombing was announced 12 hours before it happened by mistake. They put the, um, they got the times mixed up and they put, and they put it on television too early. Again, I don't know if any of you know this kind of stuff, but this is basically the, this is basically what happened. So Christine Evans knows about it. Yep. So 1812, Rothschild sold his shares because everyone, because everyone knew that Rothschild had men on the ground when Napoleon and Wellington were fighting um, France versus England, and Rothschild sold his shares. Everyone assumed that Wellington had lost, and they sold in a panic. Rothschild waited. His back then communication was much slower. He knew that, that the news would come to everyone else a bit later, and he then bought up the shares, and that's how he took control of the stock market and cornered the wealth. And since that day, have managed to control it. The Great Depression. If you actually study the history of that one, people lost their houses, savings. Roosevelt forced Americans to give up their gold or go to jail for ten years. Who knew that, by the way? Yep. Pretty much a lot of people. But they were forced to give up their gold or go to jail for 10 years. And isn't it interesting that today, that all gold you purchase has to be registered? So why do you think that is? Is it because they want to do the right thing by you? Or they want to make sure when they're ready to seize it, they can. I think we all know the answer to that. And then, of course, World War II began. So gold, silver, doesn't matter. It all has to be. In 1938, if you actually want to study Howard Freeman, one of the main teachers in the underground movement, you can find this stuff online. You've got to really look, but you can find it. Um, USA had a secret meeting and it was basically they were told that they were now bankrupt, that, that international bankers in Europe were now dictating what they had to do. And they were told that they were now no longer under constitutional law, but they were under what was called public policy, where they would be getting told what, what to basically decide in their court hearings. And ever since that day, this is what's been happening. We've been under this thing called common law. Um, once we're now under what's called admiralty or commercial law, which is basically contract law. So no longer are we under, under the basic common law. And you've got to understand this picture here. This is the best way to think of it. See, when you're a sovereign man or woman, you're, you're ultimately under God's law. And then provided that a government is obeying God's law, then basically there's no problem obeying a government. So provided the government is obeying God's law, there's no problem. You can obey it. But what happens when a government passes law contrary to God's law? 
then of course you got to choose: do I obey man's law, or do I go civil disobedience? And a good example of this one was, of course, the Nazi war crimes. Many of the people were arguing, well, we just did what Hitler told us to do. And, of course, they were told in no uncertain terms that it didn't work that way. And basically, if they were going to, the fact was crimes were crimes and deep down ignorance of the law is no excuse. So once you break higher laws, you are accountable for it. So when you break higher laws, you are accountable. So another extreme example in China. And the one they had the one child policy or when they were going around torturing people with different religious beliefs. So the fact they're working under some government law, is that going to exempt people? Of course not. When you read what Bastiat said in his book, The Law, one of the great books by Bastiat, B-A-S-T-I-A-T, -A -A The Law, he talks about the difference between lawful and legal. But he said just because something is legal, which means there's some contract saying they can do it, doesn't mean it's lawful. So it may be legal to take 60% of money in taxes. It may be legal to force people to kill their own children, but it doesn't make it lawful. So I'm sure you're getting what I'm saying here, but basically common law means life, liberty or property. So let me just quickly write this out for you just to make this a little bit easier for you. So common law is, is it basically is fine provided life, liberty, or property, not offended. Ultimately, the Ten Commandments to be honoured. That's the basic of common law. Admiralty or contract law. Under a statute or agreement made between consenting parties. Now, mind you, most of our tax system is anything but consenting, but this is what contract or admiralty law is. So, for example, martial law. Brought into being in times of conflict or danger, i.e., a dictatorship, potentially martial law is dictatorship. And admiralty law, which means on the sea, works very similar. Contract law in business between consenting parties. What we've got going on right now is contract law by deception. E.g., you sign your tax return, which says you now are legally required to pay taxes. You go and you get out a mortgage and then you effectively come on the contract. And the thing with contract law is you, you must follow it to the nth degree. So once you sign the contract, you are legally required at law to honour your contract. So the moment you say, I'm a taxpayer, you're legally required to give to Caesar or give the government what is the government's. Who's getting what I'm saying here? I know this is pretty deep. In my own um, trust deed, for example, just so you know, in my own church, City Awakening, which I run all my spiritual work in, I actually do have a clause in there. And the clause says, I honour the government's law, provided it stays in alignment with God and hires law. I said, if they actually break God's law, I no longer regard myself as bound by it. He thinks it's a pretty cool clause to have. I'm the only person I know who's got that clause in my deed. And the government approved it. The ATO approved them. Jeff Pace says, say it again, please. I have a clause in my church which says I'll honour God the law, provided it's in alignment with God's law. But once it breaks God's law, then God's law takes priority over laws of the state. And the tax service have approved it. I have an approved church right now by the government, I, acknowledging that my, that my church has a lot to do. It's my, my own deed. I drafted it myself. So basically... These are what's called operating on the higher law under sovereign law. In fact, in 2005, I ran my church under a completely unregistered private foundation and I set up my own deed. I drafted my own deed with somebody else um, because, as you know, I used to be a lawyer 
and I did that. And I even had the ATO speaking to me on the phone telling me I was supposed to register. I said, no, I don't. I said, that's a choice. I'm choosing not to register it. You can't make me. And I hung up on them. Well, you got to realize, Christine, Christine's on public asked to be a legal department and missed it. You got to realize how it works. And the fact is, when you're operating in higher authority, Daniel McLaughlin, the guy from the underground movement, he used to walk through airports without a passport. And he would just tell him straight out, look him in the eye. And he says, I come in the authority of Christ, the King of Kings. So he said, I don't need a passport. He said, I'm not under admiralty law because passport is permission to pass a port. And he, he, that's one of the reasons he was a hero. And he was let through in numerous airports without even a passport. He just said straight out, I don't need one. He would walk into courts and stand up at the back of courts. And he refused to come into their witness stand. He said, I, I refuse to submit to your jurisdiction because you're speaking shit. That's what he would say to them. And they'll get angry and try to arrest him. And he would say to them, you try to arrest me and I'll get you. And you start quoting ancient laws and the judges would shit themselves. So believe me, when you have authority, things change. I, I was famous on the internet in 2011 because I went into a court in Queensland and I, on a speeding fine matter. And I remember I'd been praying and meditating. I walked in and I actually felt angelic presence around me. And I actually said to the judge very respectfully, I said, I don't see how they can bring me in for a speeding fine because it says here that my accuser is Sergeant Nigel Bowman. Now you try to tell me that he owns the roads and they end up dropping the case. And you'll find it on the internet, you know, Warren Black speeding fine. It was, a, and um, I actually had the police come and visit me to talk to me about privately about the fact I was getting out of so many speeding fines using these powers and telling me they wanted me to stop. Um, so there's many others I could tell you here, but that's that's for another time because I'm kind of getting too excited and getting distracted telling you all this stuff. So anyway, yeah, as you can see, we've had many crashes. I don't need to remind you of this. Um, we, we've had plenty of crashes since, and believe you me, we have a mother of a crash awaiting us yet still to come yet. That's going to finish off what we do. The fact is right now, you have a world where it's not hard for them to bring in a new world financial system. Everyone's now using their phones, their credit cards to everything. All they have to do is just crash the system and have everything working through a phone. And then they can move it off the phone and then move it into an implant system. It's not hard. There's many ways that you can do it, supposedly to track terrorism, stop it, whatever. So we have record levels of global debt, no longer backed by gold, Reserve Bank admitting it. And then, of course, the renaissance when king edward basically banned usury he banned interest you can read about this he just said but usury he basically killed off the the worst of the bankers and he the rest of them he kicked out of the country or forced them to basically renounce their banking he did a jubilee he, he waived he forgave everyone's mortgages and gave the whole country a fresh start people went from working 60 to 70 hours a week barely able to feed their families to living within 10 years, they were working on average 23 weeks of the year, taking 29 weeks of the year off. Churches sprung up everywhere because people had so much time. People spent more time on their families, art, um, music sprung up in the Renaissance, and churches everywhere because King Edward said that basically everyone to come and start basically worshiping and giving honor to higher to higher um, beings. So, absolutely, Christine. Yeah, the freedom in the Renaissance and. Um, History books have been altered. I mean, I've met people in the underground movement who show me stuff. For example, in the 1300s or sometime around the 13, 1400s, there was, for example, they actually raised a whole pope from the history books. There was a pope, um, you know, because we all read about the Catholic Church. And one thing that no historian has never been able to explain, for example, is the Dark Ages and how it ended. Because the Dark Ages, as we know, was a terrible time. I mean, the church controlled it. There was burning at the stakes and everything, and it was vicious. But there's a whole lot of history that kind of doesn't really make sense. It just seemed to end. And we all know that, that, that bad people don't suddenly stop becoming bad. Um, things get a change because people take a stand. Black, black people didn't suddenly start getting rights. Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King did something about it. So history shows that these things happen, and I'm sure you all would agree with me and accept the truth of what I'm saying here. But there was a pope, um, a very different pope to any of the others, a, a pope who was known as Pope Peter, who, who basically came in and he had a vision and encounter with Mary in a chapel who told him she wanted him to end the Dark Ages. And essentially they sent him great spiritual help and filled him with the spirit. 
And this guy came out and single-handedly, along with a few others, ended the Dark Ages over a 20-year period. He ordered all the people involved in burning witches and torturing the women. He rounded them all up. They tortured and killed them all off. They killed off and gave them a taste of their own medicine. They executed anyone who'd been involved in violating the women and extorting the people. And basically um, ended up forming an alliance with King Edward in England. And because he came to England to try and force England to come under their reign, and King Edward said he didn't want to do that. So he ended up seeing that King Edward was a good man. The two of them formed an alliance and ended the Dark Ages. And basically, 20 years after he started, the Dark Ages was all but over, it was just a little bit left to go. And basically, this Pope ended up dying in the Swiss Alps because he. He was actually told in the vision that his time had ended, his, his, his era was ended, but he wanted to finish off what he started because there's still some parts where the Dark Ages hadn't ended and he basically died in the Swiss Alps. But the point is, there's things that have been not told to you. There, there's been times in history where banking has been stopped, where usury and oppression have ended, where, where people have been free from taxes. And like I said, where there was a time in that period where the Catholic Church actually ended the very Dark Age where it has started. And that's the reason why the Catholic Church has never been quite the same since. So no one's talking, so you're either stunned or who's finding this really, really like, wow. But yeah, all this stuff, stuff which I said, I just couldn't share with people, you know, but yeah, wow, people are saying, but yeah. But yeah, these things can happen, everyone. You know, there was, like, like I said, you know, this King, King Edward and then this Pope, you know, and the, the key to realize about this Pope, and I remember when I particularly had an encounter with these ETs and they were the ones who particularly confirmed and told me about this Pope. They said, we want you to know about this Pope because they said, you have to realize that the reason this Pope entered the Dark Ages was because he, he was vicious. In other words, whereas all the others, are too, you know, he said most good people are too nice and in the dark, find ways to get around. He said this guy was different. He said no one knew how to handle him because he had no fear and giving him a taste of their own medicine. He would round up the worst of the torturers and he would torture them. He'd humiliate them. So this guy basically was strong and he had no fear of his people. And so they said, and basically, and he brought in women's rights back in those ages like you wouldn't believe he said women got their freedoms back like like were unfathomable so that's why i was told they said you know we want the women to have their freedoms back again so how do you cover yourself for it well this is going to require a whole further training but for now i wanted to really focus on doing that but what i will say is that number one skill is living by faith and learning to trust and manifest provision when you need it that's the number one thing in all honesty, if you can manifest provision when you need it, that's all that matters. But the other thing is tangible, real assets. And, and things like gold, silver, platinum, for example, real wealth. Um, realizing that you can still get wealth in cash in Wall Street, but realize it's an illusion. It's a big Ponzi scheme. And, and just like any Ponzi scheme, you don't want to be the ones left holding onto it when it crashes. And we've all, and many of us have seen Ponzi schemes and been involved in investments that aren't actually real. So, for example, I'm going big time into sports betting right now and some other investing, but I'm knowing as I get the money to pull it out and do other stuff. Making sure that you do that. Christine Norby says, gold, silver, platinum can't be just confiscated this. Well, like I said before, if you got it registered on the system, absolutely they can. So this is why you're going to have to learn stuff and really learn to basically become a bit smarter in how you do it. And when you say confiscate it, the number one thing is a spiritual battle. When you have, if you have more spiritual power than what they have, they won't come near you. And you read about this. Some, there's so much I could teach about this, like like Savonarola, the prophet in the, in the 1400s in Rome, a great spiritual prophet who literally would go and speak across Rome and everywhere people would flock to the streets to hear this guy preach and would turn their lives around. And and then one stage France was coming to invade Italy and the whole Italians were in terror because they knew they had no chance against this army. And Savonarola went out there into the middle of the desert and waited for the king for of France. And when they came in on their army, they all stopped astonished. You can read about this in history. And they just saw this young boy 
because he's only he's only a boy, about 16, 17 or someone like that, or I can't he was a young man at least. And they asked him, the king said, what are you doing here? He said, I've come on behalf of my people. He said, I've come to tell you that in the name of Christ, you're not allowed into this city and you need to go. And basically the king said, well, who are you to tell me? And he said, well, you, you I come in a higher power than you. And so he said, I'm telling you, you're not to cross here. But he said, I'm asking you nicely, please go. He said, we have no beef with you. So turn your army and leave. And the king said, okay. And the king of France turned and they left, which they never did for anyone. And there's numerous stuff you can read about in history about the power of what happens when you do this. I've had many miracles in my own life, which um, some of you have come to my other webinars know about this, where I've seen miracles happen in my own life with this kind of stuff, where I've just simply trusted in higher powers and seen things happen. Involved in a, in a horrific car crash and as a car crash smashed in and a whole car crumpled up i felt angels around me everything was slow motion i walked out the car as if nothing had happened you know i've got numerous stories i can tell you about this and even financial provision when i've just needed it and times when i lived for two years literally by faith when i just didn't have money my whole wedding in 1995 i had no money at the time because my whole focus was my spiritual work. So I just said, well, we're going to have a great wedding. It's going to cost us nothing. And it cost us nothing. We just had people being led to us, giving us free things, free this. Someone coming and said, we, I, I own a car yard. We're going to give you free use of our <coughs> limousines. So I know full well how living by faith, I don't have any fear of what's to come. But one thing I was told by these um, ETs is what's going to come is so horrific. Your task is to teach people and help other people get wealthy. So for me, my path is not to be wealthy for myself. It's not. I, my plan is I'm, I'm accumulating a lot of wealth, but not for me. It's being put in a trust. It's being run by others. And these people are going to use it for planet's good and just to make sure I'm looked afterwards. But part of the deal I made with these extraterrestrials is that, you know, building personal wealth wasn't my path and the best decision that I ever made, to be honest with you. And so that's been my life story anyway. It's really between what's happening. Even income tax is a huge swindle. And in 1915, for example, it was brought in to fund the war. Um, at the time, only corporations paid it. And they were told corporations would only ever pay it. And that was what the Act said. 1936, when they changed the Act, they didn't actually change that. So to this day, still only corporations are subject to income tax. And there's still no definition of income in the Act. And it's still voluntary. But of course, people are in the illusion of believing they have to pay it. Now, mind you, they use all kinds of pressure. They use all kinds of um, intimidation. It's a bit like going to, to bullies in a schoolyard and telling them you've got no right to do this. It doesn't change the fact they're going to do everything to stop you. But the fact is, income tax is not necessary. Many countries don't have it hardly at all or have very low taxes. And in Australia right now, it's all a big swindle. So we look at Revelation 13 here. And it goes right through this great long thing about here, about these two beasts that came up and were able to do all this different stuff. And what it says here is that he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond or slave, to receive a mark, which is an implant, basically, in their right hand or their foreheads. And that no one could buy or sell unless they had the mark or the name or number of the beast. So you couldn't buy or sell unless you were part of his system. Now, Keep in mind that my partner, at the time that I was teaching this just recently, she had a dream and she saw all these people literally wanting to commit suicide and screaming with mental torture. Now, it's interesting because when you study about this implant technologies that are coming out now, they have the ability to control people's mind and thought patterns using frequencies. They're using it now even without implanting you. They put frequencies. Hoxie worked out in the 1930s you could use frequencies to heal cancer. So the, the dark are using frequency technology to control people's minds and your thinking. So unbeknownst to most people, you've got, you got energy transmitters in you, which are being used to do that um, energetically. Now, again, you either think it's crazy, but there is so much evidence on this for those who are open um, that they can do this to you. And believe you me, they're talking about this. And you, right now, you've got these different things. So, for example, well, there's numerous sites which talk about it and give the evidence, but... There's lots and lots. I tried to find a couple. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, these sites aren't opening, which is a bit of a, oh, no, it's open. 
the technology, it's been around since the 1970s and 80s, by the way, this technology to microchip people. By there's some places already right now they're doing it. Um, they, they, they're doing it with pets. So again, keep in mind they numb you so you get used to it. Pets are being done it now. And the whole idea is to basically make sure you can track your pets and it's easy. Can you see how easy it would be to tell parents, you know, if we put a track in, a chip in your child when they're born, then it, it allows us to track your child and keep an eye on them. And of course, without realizing now, and it means you can't lose your child they can't be kidnapped or whatever else and i'm sure that many parents would take it without even questioning so you can see this here so the implanted will stand there so it goes on like that so Even in the point here, for now it's all voluntary. We'd be forced to have it. An advanced capsule one implanted in his left hand, things like that. You got this one here as well. So basically, the whole point is there's plenty of it around there. And the fact is, more and more people are being made ready for this. And so, effectively, we're, even if it's not a literal implant, but from what it's saying, it will be here. And the dreams we, that we've been having and things that we've been seeing are showing that. But certainly, that at the very, very least, that more and more people are learning to depend on a system for their money and for their provision other than for their own sovereignty. So the point is you're dependent on a system. True sovereignty means you depend on no one other than your own faith and trusting and connection to masters and in your own sovereign wealth. So... There's numerous other ones like I won't have time to go into now. It talks about the collapse of the system as we know it. I've got here a few of the Ten Commandments, which I just want to quickly mention. And remember, these are the basics of the common law. And when you look at even our legal system, for example, so what's actually very interesting is when you read the King James Bible, and I can remember going to non-religious seminars, like, and I'm, I'm stressing non-religious people who didn't even like religion, and they're admitting that the King James Bible is the whole foundation of our legal system. For example, it says that everything be established by two or three witnesses and, and everything in court has to go through a two or three stage step process. Um, in the Freemasons Lodge, in the high level lodge, they use the King James Bible. In dark occultic magic, they use the, the King James Bible to install dark masters onto the planet. So believe you me when I say that there's a lot to it. And this is something which I said as well as beyond churches. I mean, I think I don't have a lot of time for churches at all, mind you. I think they're a bunch of absolute halfwits who completely don't, don't understand the power of what they do. I pretty much studied every religion I could find and every level of magic and all this kind of stuff, economic systems and all that. It's been my whole life. I've been in every I've been in underground movements, all kinds of weird and wonderful groups to learn this kind of stuff. So you got here, you shall have no other gods before me. So, and really, that's not talking about you must go to this certain church. Quite the contrary. It's saying that when you trust in things outside of yourself, that's idolatry. So true sovereignty means you trust in basically your own connection to the masters and knowing they can talk to you direct and knowing that when you're connected with Christ, Christ will talk to you direct. He doesn't need to go, need to go through a church. Quite the contrary. So you can talk direct to masters or the source or to God or whoever that happens to be, um, direct. You can talk direct to Christ, to the ultimate Lord of the planet. You shall not steal. These are also important to finances. You shall not covet your neighbor's God, goods. So in other words, all these things, stealing, swindling, um, committing false witness means deliberately lying to deceive for private gain, or really wanting to take other people's Property. This is the root of much money problems that we have in society today. And ultimately, all laws in the common law comes back to this. Life, liberty, property. In other words, if you truly love the masters, the gods, Christ, the higher laws of the planet, and if you love your neighbours yourself, which means life, liberty, property, you'll care about your neighbour's property. Like, 
I would rejoice to hear my clients are doing well financially, not feeling, oh, that's not fair. I wish I was doing better than them. If I would never want to take your liberty. With my partner, Sammy Lucas, I would never want to undermine her rights as a woman. I would want to, her to, to be cherished and to flourish. And likewise, Sammy Lucas, as my partner, would not want to control me as a man or manipulate me or, or browbeat me or nag me. She want to encourage me to be the greatest man I can be, which by mind you is what she does with me. So imagine the power of this kind of belief to teaching in relationships. That's why, by the way, I meet so many parents who hate religion, who put their kids in Christian schools. They admit to me, they say, we actually do it because at least we know our kids will get some decent values and get taught some better values how to treat each other. Now, mind you, there's some Catholic and other schools that don't do that, but you get the general metaphor of what I'm trying to say here. But imagine when you love your neighbor, when you love your clients, you won't want to swindle people on the internet. You know, you won't want to swindle your clients. You won't want to rip someone off, but quite the contrary. You know, I've had people who I've done business with who've helped me out so much, I've insisted on paying them more. I've just said, look, I just doesn't feel right. I, I've i been seeing this amazing um, spiritual energy worker in, 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 in Fremantle. And it's been the last two or three times she's charged me. And I said, no, that's far too low for what you did for me. And I've actually paid her more money. I've said, no, I can't pay you that. In good conscience, you're under, you know, I'm, I'm, I need to pay you more. So that's, that's how they want us to be with each other. And there's a little bit of a sober warning here that says what will happen for those who worship the beast. In other words, those who take on, in other words, who get into idolatry and ultimately go outside themselves and completely are looking to a system to support them rather than trusting their own sovereignty. It's basically saying it'll be horrendous for you. And we all know what it's like. How horrible is life for you when you trust entirely in a man or woman in a relationship and they end up bruising and hurting you. It could take you years to go over it, if ever. When you get ripped off in an investment scandal, all this stuff. And there's nothing worse than, imagine if you've got your whole trust in this financial system and it collapses. Why do you think people were jumping out of windows in the stock market crash? So the point is, you really, 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 really need sovereignty in your life like never before. And I'm sure you would agree with me. It goes on here in Jeremiah, give glory to the Lord before he causes darkness, before your feet stumble, and while you look for light, he turns it into shadow of death and makes it gross darkness. In other words, find, get back your sovereignty. Give, you know, give glory to the Lord, in other words, to Christ, to really connect with Christ, to connect with the higher masters, before darkness is caused. You actually see in every major successful society in West, in Australia, in America, what got them successful was they did. They had strong spiritual values. They acknowledged God, the creator, they acknowledge Christ. And I emphasize, I'm not talking about some weird church with some weird facilities with some strange guy in a beard staring at you with a big stick. This is not what it's talking about. It was but there's clearly acknowledging God, the creator, Christ, who clearly said that he, as a master, works, works with us and wants to work within us and the kingdom of heaven was within us. In other words, ultimately, we find the ultimate kingdom of heaven within ourselves as we connect straight to Christ and connect to the higher law and obey the higher laws that govern this planet. So, whereas when you're in truth, living in line with your own truth, this is what happens. You basically, the glory, which means a, a bright light starts to come from you. More people are listening to my webinars than ever before, not for any other reason, but I know there's a light. I have people meeting me now saying there's like a light shining out of your face when I see you. It's happened a number of times to me lately. I've even had people say to me, your aura is so bright and your light body is so big, what's going on with you? And just because daily I've been activated, I spent four weeks back in September, October, about in October, where in all honesty, crazy as it may sound, I was hardly on earth. I was being taken so much into heavenlies, I was hardly on earth. I was getting healed of all kinds of stuff, which I'd spent years trying to heal from my childhood. And this got healed almost within two weeks, it all got healed. And people have been coming to my spiritual webinars are seeing powerful healings happen regularly now. There are many on here right now who've experienced some very, very profound healings. So we're in a time, the beautiful thing here, this is not from the Bible, this is from another book, Book of Enoch, about a great sword of judgment, which is coming against the people to slay them. In other words, not physically go around killing people, but spiritually, energetically slaying the system, which is destroying you and truly becoming sovereign. That's the point. So it's begun. Already people in Sweden have had a tiny 
um, implant in their hand or place their credit card information. It's happening already in Sweden right now as we speak. By the capacity to hold entry part. You can see why people are going to do this, can't you? Europe especially, this is going to take off. Mark my words, this implant system will really take off. It'll be a way to control the unrest that's coming in Europe. The unrest that you're seeing now is only going to get bigger and bigger. Eventually, this is going to form part of the solution, trust me. America. People are using facial recognition, voice recognition, fingerprint. For example, Snapchat now. In the USA, airports are now talking about facial recognition. Elon Musk was talking about using facial recognition for drones to kill people who are terrorists. It makes to have everyone on a facial recognition system. So you got this here. And it's not much of a step to then bring in some kind of implant or chip or something. Even if it, none of it happens quite as extreme as I'm saying, this is what we're talking about now and what we're coming towards. So will everyone be affected? You see that here, Isaiah 24, Revelation, and there's all kinds of stuff and other um, ancient books as well. Nostradamus talks about this, all these kind of people. So I'm going to move through this stuff here. So what we're going to do now is because we've hit 11 o'clock. So the main point I want to make is that, and the reason I put this sacred geometry is this is a proven sacred geometry symbol that really, as you look at it, actually activates your energy field, okay? So the whole point of this is really now is we really, 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 as much as I can, I'm here to help people have a new financial system and really help people start to actually flourish and start to become part of a whole new regime. So the day I wanted to really wake people up more than anything else as to what's coming. And what I'm planning to do next is to do a, a second follow-up webinar from this that will also involve teaching some of the more practical things about this. And that you practically, because it's all very well to teach you this stuff and get you all alarmed and get you all excited or whatever, or get you moving, but then you actually do need to learn practical stuff of what comes next. So this is what we're going to be doing next is a follow-up from this one. And so at the end of the web, so really we're going to open the door up. And what I'm going to do is people who want to be part of that. So let me just check, Gracie, are you on here right now? Just want to check, Gracie, are you listening? Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to get people to give their information for this. Because what we're going to do as a follow-up webinar is going to be much more practical and teaching this stuff. I want people to give their names and give their emails so and phone numbers in the text chat. So what you can start doing is putting it in there because what we're going to be doing is taking some questions now. And as you start to write your questions in, I'm just going to quickly run through and share with you what we're going to be offering, which, like I said, I'm not going to, I, I was going to offer a course today, but I just thought, no, I actually prefer to just get people open up. This is more than just an hour and a half. I really want to teach you this properly. So we're going to do a follow up. We're going to go into the more practical and continue on the rest of this webinar in part two. So really, it's very simple what you do. For those of you who remain, there was as much as 68. There's now 60 on here, so about eight people left, so that's good. The whole point was I was a little bit, I was very, very blunt, direct, and extreme because I just wanted to flush out anyone who really basically doesn't see the, the seriousness of what's coming. And now the next webinar, we can start to really move towards that. And then for those, I and mean, then after we do the second webinar, we're going to be running a group for those who want to become part of it, which is going to really help people to become abundant and financially successful and really build a sovereign wealth movement. That's the plan. So, yep, that's great. I've got I've got Christine, James, Lorinda, and Peter. Got your stuff there, Andrew. Yep, Andrew, just give your details as well. So, here, here's your three choices, really, what you do from here. Um, keep being a slave and hope it all works out in the end and just see me as an extremist. So, in other words, you think, yeah, that Warren Black's just gone a bit crazy. You know, he can go and eat it. You know, it is, you know, go and do whatever. But, we're not listening to what he's saying. Figure it all by yourself or become part of something a lot bigger. That's really your choices. So the facts are that most people don't take action. So the reality is only a minority are going to actually take action. 
So that's just the reality. Only only a minority will actually take action. So the ones that do, they're, they're going to be the ones who, as things come about in society, will be the ones that will really be part of the new changes that are coming. Now, and we'll really experience abundance. The truth is, to be successful in anything, as you know, takes action, and it does take real work to do it. Some of you are business owners here, and you know what I mean. It takes really serious action. So ultimately, are you successful, which means you're taking action, or are you burying your head in the sand? It's really that simple. So you don't need to type, yes, I am. If you're typing your details, that's fine. Um, this is really becoming sovereign and free and getting out of the system. And in all honesty, I really just want to work with very, very serious people. So, yeah, someone said, not clear what action you're requesting of us here. Well, then, if you're not clear, you're probably, there's not much point you giving us your details, to be completely honest, because it's been very, very clear what I said. And excuse my bluntness, but it's been very, very clear. We're going to be doing a second webinar, which is going to be teaching about high level sovereignty and getting into more practical action for this particular webinar and what's going to be required next. So today I've given you a bit of the spiritual and um, factual wake up. The next thing we're going to be doing after this is teaching in a second webinar, which will not be any charge again. I'm not going to charge to that one. It's going to be showing you about um, basically gold, silver, other stuff, just really starting to give you a bit about that and giving you an overview of what I see is happening. And then after a second webinar, for those of you who are like, yep, this is really something I want to be part of, we are going to be offering an ongoing group that will require a, some level of investment and it will, which will explain to you um, depending on how it works. So this is to be upfront with you. After, so it will be free the next one. After that, we'll offer a group. There'll be some kind of investment. But yeah, look, we'll, there'll be various options in the way you invest in that group. That's how this is going to work to make sure as many people can be in it as possible. So, excellent. Gosh, just about everyone's put down their cane, which is great. You're a great group of people. Goodness, really good. So, I've written here who this is not for and who this is for. So, it's not for you if you are a skeptic or you're not ready yet. And in all honesty, Again, if you're not ready, I'm really not here to give you a hard time. I know I've been pretty extreme and pretty in your face. And as long as you keep coming and, you know, some people take longer than others and I'm really okay about that. Um, some people are just not committed on an action taker or you're skeptic and really in all honesty, there's no point in you coming. Sovereignty group, um, those who are for the follow-up ones, you're an action taker, you're already successful but are keen to invest and you open the higher realms. So what we'll be doing is having the follow-up webinar later this week is when we'll be doing it. So what I've so basically I've got everyone's details now. People have been flying it left, right, and center. So next thing now is any questions from people. So any questions which people have got now. So, yep, any questions that people have got? And thank you. In all honesty, I'm really pleased at what a great group we have here of people who are so keen. And it really shows that we're living in a time of a lot more awareness on these issues because I can remember years ago talking about this and did not get the same awareness and hunger that people are showing today. So, I think the timing is really good for all of this. And like I said, I'll, I'm the kind of person as well. I'm very, very um, realistic and humble about things. I know what we know this is the truth. And really, all of you deep down know that what I'm saying is either spot on or very, very close. And in saying all that too, we honestly don't know the timing of all of this. We just don't know. So, yep. So the webinar will be happening later in this week for people about the time frame. I've got there's quite a lot happening in terms of stuff at the moment, but um, but it'll be happening on on it'll be happening either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday at some time, most likely again in the um 
something like that. So Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, um, and I'll let you know exactly when it's going to be happening. So. Brilliant. Ready to get going, Joy? Yeah, look, it's amazing. I've got like, we had 60 out in the webinar, about nine people left, but of those, a few people already told me they couldn't stay for the full time. So, <laughs> yep, you have a very busy week, Christine Evans. Yes, I do, Christine. I'm seeing Christine in Albany. We're doing some work um, down in there. I've got various webinars happening, so. And it's 11, 11 right here in Perth right now. So lots is happening. Adrian asked an interesting question. How do you make money in economic crash besides investing during the economic crash? Look, it's a good question. And in all honesty, one thing I've learned is the best thing you can do is, is train yourself to be a level of mindset and mentality and with few tires. And in fact, one of the things that happened with me, and I'll, I'll say this honestly, I can remember even a little while ago saying to some people around me who worked with me in my business and how I told them to pull their weight a bit more. I said to them, in all honesty, I said, I could do this without any of you. I said, I don't have any fear what's coming. I said, I've learned to live by faith. I can remember learning to live on next to nothing. It doesn't bother me if I, because I can remember even when I went broke and lost everything at one stage, I still lived a good life because I just said, you know what, somehow it's all going to work out. I never had any fear around it and I didn't let the fear take hold of me. So the number one thing that I can really teach people more than anything is you just learn is a deeper level of trust where you're just not afraid of anything and you know you can manifest money no matter what. But then in saying that, even the Great Depression, for example, there were actually some incredible investments that did really well in that time. And a lot of it's just learning to think. And when you've got a clear mind, you can see opportunities. You start to think, well, hang on a sec. It's pretty obvious what's going to do well. In the Great Depression, for example, you start to see the obvious things that are going to do well in the next little while. And some of it's already happening. You've got things like um, you even start to become people who are involved in designing new opportunities because you see the opportunities that are needed. The main, the main thing is when we're living in a mind where we're a slave and we're going to work every day or we're doing a job we hate, we don't have the creative energy to do that. I have noticed since I've completely let go of my fear and I've got on my path and I'm not even thinking about money anymore because I've moved beyond that, I get ideas flooding to me right now. My only issue, which I've got right now, is I have so many ideas that, 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 that I've got and so many things to do, I just don't have enough people or in my team yet to help me implement them fast enough. That's what's happening right now in my life. And even even yesterday, for example, I was making money in sports betting. The yesterday and the day before I made a little bit just by trusting and just by tapping into higher realms and being shown things. Um, today I haven't done it because um, I just didn't have the time because I had this webinar to do as an example. So when you get in, when you really go beyond fear, you start to see opportunities and you, you can see what's coming in the system and you start being ready to become part of something much greater. So that's the biggest thing which I really know that we'll be teaching people as well as in terms of investing. For example, I have people who know how to buy gold and precious metals, but in much more sovereign jurisdictions, for example, there's things like that you can learn. There's learning how to, um, you know, learning more about precious metals and understanding which ones do what, which ones basically, for example, um, what purposes they serve. That's another example. Um, learn the truth about cryptocurrencies and what they are. Learn about the alternate financial systems that are, that are likely to come in the future to help you know that when you see the opportunities, which ones are, are you can invest in or which got the greatest chance of success. There's even um, one thing that I've even been told is in the future, I know sometime next year for people who join this group, I'll be doing a special retreat in Costa Rica at some stage. And in that one, I've even been told by them. They said, we will show you and your group who, when you do that particular Costa Rica one, what to invest in. And I don't know if any of you have heard of Silicon Valley, for example. With Silicon Valley, that actually happened with Elon Musk. They, and some of these guys, they actually were shown stuff when they went into, some, into a deep state. And they were shown what's doing their businesses for the year. So this is the kind of stuff that can start happening when you become sovereign and when you become spiritually connected. All these opportunities and possibilities are happening to you. And that was one of the things I know and saw for next year of Costa Rica. 
which got me really excited. Now, for me, that seems almost profound for me, but that's one of the things which I've like, you know what? For now, let's just get this group happening and let's just teach people the knowledge because the more people we can get to become part of this new move and new movement and this new work, because the truth is that's what we're going to need. The fact is this system that's coming in, it's very easy to say that we won't be part of it, but unless we have a very clear alternative, a very clear alternative, unless you have moved beyond fear and become spiritually connected with higher powers and higher masters than the dark magic that's running the planet right now, no matter what you think or no matter how you feel about things, the only thing I can guarantee you is you will end up in some way part of the system. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Who's smart enough to get what I'm saying here? But if you're not connected with high enough powers and have sufficient knowledge, you will be part of it. You can say you won't be, but you will be. Yep, excellent. Now it's good. We've got a lot of switched on people here. Okay, everyone. So what we're going to do now is I've got all your details. And thank you, everyone, for your participation. At this stage, it'll be almost certainly on Friday or Saturday, just while we've got everyone now. I'm just curious. Does any day suit people better than the other? And any particular time, like mornings, evenings, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just curious. So if anyone's got any particular preference, if there's a big similarity to what I'm saying, that will help. That will basically help me. Yep, interesting. A lot Friday. Someone said Thursday, which is unlikely, but. Friday is looking the most likely because nearly everyone's saying Friday, apart from a few. I'm looking at probably doing it Friday evening Australian time is what I'm thinking of possibly doing. So, but I'll let you know. Okay, well, well thank you so much for coming and I really appreciate you listening to me. And I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. So thank you, everyone.